Here's to the ladies, the fair and the weak. Fair they are, we'll all admit. But who dares call them weak? Our modern girls play as hard and with as much vitality and stamina as any man. How do they do it? Where do they find all that energy, that seemingly inexhaustible store of pep and ginger? What is that whipcord resilience that lets the weaker sex play half the night, then bob up clear-eyed, ready for the next morning's work? This frail creature strikes her typewriter keys about 40,000 times a day. Spaces 7,000 times. Shifts to capitals and returns the carriage more than a thousand times each. Altogether, a few ounces at a time, she exerts more than five tons of pressure on her dainty fingertips in one day's work. And any way you look at it, women's work is not for sissies. Most men would have a hard time of it if they were to change jobs with wife, mother, or girlfriend. The homemaker walks miles every day, from sink to icebox, from cupboard to stove, and from kitchen to dining table. Let's use some very special photography to compress the whole job of preparing a meal into a few seconds of time, to see how many steps it really takes to get dinner on the table. Remember, this is a hurry-up picture of just one meal out of more than a thousand. Is that what you'd call a blitz meal? Even an efficiency expert would be staggered by the amount of chasing around and indoor road work that the little woman takes as a matter of course. There's the stair climbing event, for example, usually accomplished full tilt and with an armload of brooms, mops, blankets, and sundry household paraphernalia. Here's another hurry-up picture of the clinging vine whizzing through a day's program that would leave the average mountaineer gasping for breath. Each trip upstairs is the equivalent of lifting her own weight 12 feet. And at the rate of 20 trips a day, that's lifting about 12 tons of weight. Who said weaker sex? Ironing is another kind of work that's a lot of little jobs all rolled into one. Just to iron one of hubby's shirts, for instance, the iron may have to be lifted 20 or 30 times. And since a flat iron weighs about as much as a brick, a day's ironing actually uses just about as much muscle as bricklaying. Flattening a towel or wielding a trowel, even Stephen. Had your iron today, lady? Because men are beginning to realize how much lifting and pushing the little woman has to do around the house, more and more muscle savers are being designed to make the little jobs easier. It's one thing to make 6,000 separate scrubbing motions over a tub of clothes, and quite another to push a button that does all the work. Here's another example of sheer brute force. Now, let's make a super scientific test. You'll notice that this girl is wearing a very special thimble. In fact, it isn't a thimble at all, but a gadget of springs and levers to measure the amount of force needed to sew on a button. And it's called an ergometer. According to the ergometer dial, it takes 18 units of force to push the needle through the cloth just once. In sewing stitch by stitch, that work adds up. Any man will admit that's a lot of work when it's called to his attention in the right way. And this is one way of calling it to his attention. This hurry-up picture shows that a stitch in time doesn't always save nine. And anyway, who wants to save nine stitches when a machine can do all the work? A sewing machine is really an amazing invention. Especially when you stop to think that a man invented it. Yet it's simple when you know how it works. We'll slow this one down so that for the first time on a theater screen, we can all see exactly what goes on inside a sewing machine. Well, there's the needle with a little loop of thread running through the eye. That's the eye right there close to the point. The needle carries the thread down through the cloth. At the same time, underneath the cloth, Another little loop of thread is being carried in a moving carriage called a shuttle. The shuttle moves past the needle. The loops of thread cross each other and form a smooth stitch. And so that's the way a sewing machine takes the place of a lot of needless needle nudging and keeps everyone in stitches. Amazing! 
In the early days of motoring, no woman in her right mind would tackle the job of starting the engine because the job had to be done the hard way. Let George do it was the slogan. And ever since, men have bragged about being the better drivers. Then the muscle savers got to work, and the self-starter put the woman driver behind the wheel instead of in the back seat. But even recently, a motor car demanded a certain amount of athletic prowess on the part of the driver. For example, in shifting gears. Let's hook up one of these work measuring machines or ergometers to this old-fashioned gear shift lever to see how much muscle it needed to run through the gears. Ninety units. Starting and stopping. Parking and backing up on a full day's driving amounted to more than a ton of pushing plus about a city block of reaching. Putting the shift lever up by the steering wheel would cut down the amount of reaching. But with such a short lever, it would be even more work to shift the gears. In fact, more than a hundred units. To make this job easier, some sort of machine was needed to take over the muscle work of moving the gears in and out of mesh. Yet because the speed of the car and the conditions of load are never twice quite the same, a certain amount of human judgment would help to shift gears quietly and smoothly. A muscle-saving engineer who went to work on this two-sided problem found that the vacuum produced inside the motor car engine could develop plenty of power to do the actual work. And by means of a super-sensitive control, the driver could still be the real gear-shifting boss. The sensitive control can regulate the pressure in a powerful vacuum chamber so that the slightest movement of the lever will bring about a strong push in the desired direction. A push that can be controlled to follow the movement of the lever with infinite exactness. This device connected to the gears of a motor car can do 80% of this work of shifting, yet leave enough for the driver to sense the response of the gears as they move smoothly into place. Now let's use that ergometer gadget again to see how much undesirable exercise we've saved this member of the fair and so-called weaker sex. Now the dial shows about 30 units, only a few ounces of push with the vacuum gear shift. And if you stop to think about it, that's a vast improvement when it's multiplied by the amount of expert driving that our American girls do nowadays. Now that the muscle savers are busy, cutting down the amount of unnecessary work for women and for men, we'll all have more energy left for playtime. But there are still plenty of jobs left for the ergometer and the work-saving scientists to tackle. Think of all the energy that our charming millions spend in keeping beautiful. And if science is so darn wonderful, why doesn't some genius build a contraption like this?